Hey, what's going on guys? Hope everyone had a great week. Sorry in advance, the title of this video is a little bit bullshit, but I'm using it as clickbait so you can click this video. But anyways, this is one of the questions I've been asked a lot in emails and messages. It's still really common and I just had some thoughts about it so I wanted to address it. But the question is kind of like, what programming languages do I learn or what programming languages do I learn in 2016? So this video this week is gonna be non-technical video, just gonna share some of my thoughts regarding this question and hope you enjoy it. All right, let's do it. First, I was just trying to think about the root cause or maybe like the source of the issue behind asking a question like this. And I think there's like an underlying fear about not learning the right language right now. This is definitely a very natural feeling. You don't want to kind of waste your time or learn irrelevant things, and you definitely want to take the fastest route to get to some level. So no one has the right answer to this question, right? I don't have the right answer. Your teacher doesn't have the right answer. Bill Gates, well, maybe Bill Gates has the right answer, but this question is so subjective that you shouldn't even waste your brain power thinking about a question like this. All right, so in this video, I just want to give my advice and I'm breaking it up into two categories. I'm giving kind of two categories of advice around this topic. And as with anything, this is a non-technical video, so it's all my opinion. Don't take anything I say as fact. And I'm just gonna present these two possibilities for you, all right? So I just wanted to give two pieces of advice in this video. One is gonna be what's most practical, and the second one is gonna be what I believe in. If you're a complete beginner or you're just very new into software or engineering, you do need some kind of structure to help your learning. Don't expect you to just figure everything out on your own. You do need some kind of structure. So structure comes in a lot of different ways. It could be a full four, six year program at a school. It could be researching the right online classes to take or it could be signing up for a coding bootcamp if you have some extra cash. So the most practical piece of advice, which I think is practical but I might not believe in, is to join a coding bootcamp if you have the cash or the resources to get you in there. And if you have the money for it, you will be accepted. Joining those bootcamps, it's actually, it's not an application by merit, like going to a college is, it's just if you have the money, you're gonna be able to join those bootcamps, right? Those, those things are just companies and they're out to make a buck. So don't feel like, oh no, am I good enough to apply to that bootcamp? No, if you just have enough money or cash, you can join. That's why it's very practical. So once you go to a coding bootcamp, they're gonna teach you software revolving around web programming and for good reason. You'll learn the basics of web frameworks. Maybe you'll do Django and Python. Maybe you'll do Ruby and uh, Ruby on Rails. You'll probably learn some JavaScript, but every single coding bootcamp, at least the most popular ones, they all focus on web programming because that is the most high in demand right now. It's the skill most companies need for big companies, small companies. Everyone needs some kind of internet or web presence and that's why web programming is so high in demand right now and every single coding bootcamp is gonna teach you technologies revolving around that. So this is why this is the most practical approach because once you get into one of these camps, they tell you what you need to learn and they pick the most practical skills that the most employers need. So they essentially, all they're doing is getting you productive to be on the job. All the boot camps are really up to date. They, they teach you the latest and greatest technologies. I have a friend who knows someone that, I think he was a psychology major in college. He joined a coding boot camp for like six months and now he's a developer at Uber. It's crazy, right? So this is actually the most practical advice I can give. If you have the resources to do this, just join one of those boot camps, and they're gonna just tell you or spoon feed you exactly what you need to learn and you won't even have to ask yourself what languages is good because they will just tell you what languages are good. So that was the most practical portion of my advice. If you have the time and resources to do one of those camps, I think it's the fastest and easiest way to kind of get your foot into the door for engineering. Now my second kind of category of advice is kind of what I believe in and it's not related to boot camps. I think the, the real way and the most consistent, proven and kind of true way 
to go about this is to apply to the best engineering program that you can find and try to get in. This is assuming financially it's gonna be feasible for you if you have to save up some money, take out some loans, your personal responsibilities are set. You know, everybody's in a different stage in life and you might have different things besides school going on. So if all those external factors are kind of cool, I would still say the best thing for you to do is get into an accredited program to learn engineering. I think that people are a little scared of this or maybe they're a little wary of doing something like this because it actually could potentially take a long time. A lot of those programs are four, five, six year programs and that sounds like a long time to people if you haven't started it yet. So that's why it's a little scary. I made another video a while ago about how to learn programming or how to become a programmer. It was a screencast video, but pretty much all I did there was just regurgitate and copy a standard curriculum found at a four-year program. So I didn't do anything crazy. Those ideas aren't my own. All I did was take what you typically go through at one of these four-year programs and I just put it on a screencast. So it's no rocket science here, but these methods, they've been proven for a long time and they just straight up, they work. So if you guys have some spare time, just please check out some of these other screencast videos I made about learning programming languages or how to become a programmer. But the too long, don't read part of this whole section is that if you can do it, the real way is to get into a real program, okay? So got sidetracked a little bit. Let's just rewind and go back to the video title a little bit. What programming languages should I learn? If you're a complete beginner, this is the wrong question you should be asking yourself. We've already talked about this, but if you're a complete beginner, you know what to do now, all right? If you're intermediate level or you already have programming experience, the only advice I could say is that just go with what interests you, all right? So if you already have some programming knowledge and you are worried about which languages you should learn, just pick some languages and frameworks that do cool things or you think they do cool things and that's gonna be a very natural way to branch out and learn some other stuff. No language or no framework is better than another language or framework and they don't really have these time limits. I'm not sure where everyone's getting these time limits from. When people ask what language is best to use in 2016, it's the same set of languages that are good for 2015. It's the same languages that were good to learn in 2005, all right? So there's no time limits on what you should learn and what's relevant. They don't go in and out every single year. C was actually invented in the 1970s and it's still probably taught in a lot of schools and a lot of different curriculums. Is it practical for a job? Absolutely not. Learning C is not really practical for a job, but is learning C really good for you as an engineer? Yes, very good. All right, guys, that's kind of summing up the video. Nothing really technical, just a couple of thoughts I had revolving this topic. And I know I've just been asked from many different people the same exact question, so I just wanted to talk about it. Um, another thing that I wanted to bring up is kind of the purpose of my channel. A few people have asked me why I don't do like a curriculum on how to learn Java or a step-by-step -step how to code type of thing in my videos. and. I do not plan to do anything like that anytime soon. If I were to do something like that, maybe in the future, I would not pick YouTube as a platform to do that because YouTube is not designed for curriculums, all right? I don't think anyone should be learning a step-by-step -step full curriculum via YouTube videos. I think there are a lot of other platforms that are much better and optimized for that. So my videos may seem a little scattered sometimes. Sometimes they're tech videos, sometimes they're non-technical videos. I go from topic to topic, but I'm actually doing all of that on purpose. So my main purpose of all this content, of all these videos that I wanna make, is that I just want them to be supplementary videos to help you kind of get a little inside look into this industry, I guess, from both a tech and non-tech perspective. So I know I don't talk about really big topics, like big chunky topics that classes would normally talk about, but I want my content to kind of be like that, that info that's kind of in between those big chunks, that like complimentary info they don't get very often, but it's still really useful. If you're expecting a full like semester work of Java lessons, you're not gonna find that on my channel, but there's a ton of other resources for stuff like that, which give you a real step-by-step lesson plans, lectures, all that stuff. And there's a lot of resources for that. All right, guys, that's enough for today, I think. Very non-technical video, but I just had a lot of these thoughts floating around in my head regarding those 
inbound questions and messages I've received, and I just wanted to share those thoughts with you. Next week, we'll probably do a technical video again because this one was really like me ranting almost, but please, if you liked the video, please hit like. If you have any questions regarding anything, just hit me up in the comments. Please subscribe if you haven't, and thanks again for your time. All right, take care.